So our next speaker is Manuel Virgil from uh, Los Alamos National Lab. He's going to be talking about a very exciting procurement. All right, thank you. Uh, can, can there, is this thing on? Okay. Well, thank you for inviting me from the HPC User Forum. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I guess, in a way, completing a talk that we started with, by Doug Durfler and Santa Fe at the HPC User Forum. Uh, in terms of where we were then and where we are now. So we've made significant progress uh, and, and I'll share what some of those things are as we, as we go through. The, the, uh, the acquisition of large systems is, is just becoming harder and harder uh, through a lot of more uh, regulatory, in a sense, legal and oversight functions and the, the, uh, the fact that we're partnering more with other parts of the government and all that adds uh, you know, complexity and time. So anyway, let me, let me go through and see what we want. I wanted to, the, the nurse guys, a couple of the nurse guys have left, there's still one here, but I, I wanted to just go through very quickly uh, to reiterate what uh, Jay had talked about. Yes, we did the uh, nurse gate and the uh, now called Cori and the Trinity procurements together, the RFP, the technical requirements, went through and, and, and did, uh, uh, or at least we're, we're very much aware of each other's negotiations as well, and, and, our, and, and have a, a very similar base uh, statement of work that we, that we worked on. But, but we're not going to stop there. I, I wanted to put this one up uh, to say that we're going to continue to work together uh, for Cori and Trinity deployments and, 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 uh, and past that. And, and it's not like this one was our first one, although unofficially, uh, uh, you know, we did the Cielo and Hopper. We did some collaborations there, and that's what led people to allow us to work together on this thing. This was an informal agreement, mostly between the Office of Science and NNSA, uh, but it worked well. But we got lots of things to do together. Uh, you heard some of the things we're working on, but in particular, the uh, non-recurrent engineering software work for burst buffers, the, uh, the, uh, the, the software enhancements work, how, how to run a, a, a system with both Haswell and k &L nodes, so we will continue to do that and we, we plan to continue to attend each other's quarterly meetings, some have some joint meetings, etc. So I just wanted to put this one up first, that there's still a lot of work to be done together. So what I'm going to talk about is the Trinity status, the ASK computing strategy again. Uh, the Trinity project drivers and the mission need, I, although I won't reiterate everything that Doug talked about in Santa Fe, you can always go get some of those things in there, but I, I will look at the a following thing. And then the talk about Trinity, as we know it, at, at a, uh, a very high level uh, architecture review, overview, the high level capabilities and some of the schedules that we're looking at, and then summarize well, where we are today. I'm sure you'll be hearing more and more throughout the next year or two about Trinity and where we're headed. So the Trinity status, as I said, that the uh, acquisition of these types of systems, uh, and they should be, is, uh, is complex, it has a lot of oversight, uh, and, and requires a lot of time. But I think as Doug stated in Santa Fe, at that time we had hoped to have had a contract by then, but we actually, for various reasons, had to go out and do a uh, uh, best and final uh, RFP review. But we had, you know, in 2013 we had several reviews which we didn't, at the, in the NSA perspective, ever had to do before. Uh, so we had to participate in a lot of those things. We did the technical evaluations together uh, and we did the selection together. But before, uh, we, we were pretty close within a, uh, you know, a, a shot of uh, getting our approval. Uh, and then we had to go out uh, through our legal and uh, procurement department recommendations, went out for a best and final offer. Uh, it worked out well in, in the end for, for us, I believe, but nevertheless it was, uh, you know, it's always frustrating to think you're almost done and then you have to continue going. But anyway, we, we did the, uh, we released the Trinity, and Trinity only, the best and final offer RFP, we released that to the vendors in March. Uh, we had the uh, proposal evaluations and the, the negotiations completed by April uh, of this year, so that, but late April, but so pretty fast, right? And we actually had the, uh, from a procurement approval perspective, we had the notice of consent, which meant approval to proceed from the site office and from the NNSA central office back in headquarters, 
by you know the, the middle of May so that that actually was very fast I've never seen it done that quickly uh, but what held it up a little bit was the project management oversight uh, it, and as, as different departments and government do, they, it, it wasn't really any problems with Trinity, but rather in a sense they held our project hostage until they got information on another project from the lab. So anyway, that's, that's the way it goes. But we did go, they did, we did do the Trinity Independent Cost Review that we normally do for NNSA activities. We, get, we finally got the Trinity CD23 approval in July, and the contract for Trinity was awarded to Cray on uh, July 9th, 2014. Uh, what, one thing to note that for, for at least the Los Alamos part of the ACES, uh, this is the first time that we will have a repeat vendor from the last one. I mean, the, the community is a tough one and it's been changing over and over, people being bought out, people getting out of the business or sections getting out of the business. So uh, we're, we're happy we got the uh, uh, contract awarded and now we're uh, on our way doing the other stuff. So let me then talk about the ASK computing strategy. The ASK computing strategy uh, has been modified over the last this uh, last couple of years to uh, uh, to the following approach: to get to two classes of systems from the previous three. And this one is we're having the uh, the this one the advanced technology systems and the commodity technology systems. And I'm going to talk. Trinity is the uh, is, is the first advanced technology system uh, for NNSA, right? And these this advanced technology systems are supposed to be leadership class platforms, not in terms of flops, because uh, we moved away from that as well, as you'll see in a little bit, but in terms of what they can do. Uh, but the ASK program also realized that we had to start moving towards the next generation architecture, so the uh, ASK codes, the advanced simulation and computing ASK codes, would not be left behind. So the, uh, the, the, the issue with the, the, not the issue, but the main goal of the advanced technology systems is that they're to meet unique mission needs. You have to, you have to get work done, uh, but they're also to help prepare the program for future system design. So it's part of, of, of a dual, dual approach, if you will. Uh, part of this system, uh, and, and not only the Trinity, but also the uh, Livermore part of the coral procurement is going along the same route. And, and we will, they, they, they did allow, they do allow some non-recurrent engineering funding uh, to help enable at least components of some of the uh, leading edge platforms. And uh, although I put it in here, probably belongs somewhere else, Trinity will be deployed by the New Mexico Alliance for Computing at Extreme Scale, whereas our partnership with, uh, in essence, the ACES partnership with NERSC was very informal, mostly by, by uh, NNSA direction, guidance, DOE and DOE Office of Science working together. The, uh, uh, the arrangement we have uh, in ACES is a formal memorandum of, of agreement, originally signed in 2008, updated in 2013 to continue the work that uh, we started with Cielo, which we believe was a very, very successful uh, system as we move forward. So anyway, that's the ASK computing strategy. This one, uh, th th this particular slide uh, shows you the timelines. So the NNSA ASK timeline has been, uh, basically has been, not the timeline, but it's now only delivering to two sites. One is in New Mexico as part of the Sandia Los Alamos collaboration, and one is at Livermore. So I mean, you, you see the current platform, Cielo and Sequoia at Livermore. ATS-1, which is Trinity, uh, the ATS-2 Sierra system, as it's uh, now being called, right, is to be delivered two and a half years after the first delivery of the Trinity system. And then we cycled back uh, onto ATS-3 uh, to mid-2020. So it's a, a five-year cadence, if you will, between deliveries at each of the sites. So that's what we're working on. It, it's all, this, this thing also has the commodity technology systems that are there but I'm going to talk mostly about the uh, uh, advanced technology systems. What, one of the issues, and it's come up from several uh, people in the audience as well as from the speakers, uh, what we're really concerned about is not just getting onto next generation technology, but that our, that our ASK computing strategy includes the application code transitions for all platforms. I mean, that, so the applications people really do have a major challenge, 
because I mean, at, if you consider it at currently there's at least two major directions, uh, could possibly be more in terms of what they have to do in terms of architectural technologies uh, moving ahead. So this, this is uh, certainly a huge challenge. So to review the uh, Trinity project drivers and the mission need, uh, uh, so we, we uh, for Trinity we needed to satisfy the mission need for more capable platforms. And Trinity is designed, I saw several presentations uh, this morning where they were to meet the most demanding problems in, in such and such area. Well, Trinity is designed to support the largest, most demanding ASK applications uh, for the nuclear weapons program. And I think just the previous or a couple of uh, previous talks before that, we're talking about how many, you know, billions of cells or whatever were needed. When we did the mission need for uh, Trinity, right, we, we start off and what we really need is humongous, right? We basically reduced it to allow the, pe the people to, uh, uh, to, to pick one of the areas, e either increase, increasing physics fidelity, numerical fidelity, or geometric fidelity. Uh, in that sense. What we really did it uh, for in terms of the mission need was to solve a specific uh, 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 stockpile problem, right, the, the uh, nuclear explosives package problem, uh, which said we need at least 10 times more so that we can uh, you know, at least do a little bit of geometric and uh, physics fidelity increases to support what we need. So it, this, this is where the big problems run. This is where Trinity, uh, is, this is what Trinity is going to do. Uh, the, the mission need was developed with TriLab uh, input. Uh, the Livermore, Los Alamos, Sandia uh, came up with, I think uh, Doug presented it, with, you know, 64x Cielo, uh, that's the way we came up with it, uh, days that required over the next, uh, by year or something like that, could be wrong in the date, but yeah. Trinity will support all the uh, TriLab applications, the TriLab weapons applications community at Lano, Sandia, and Los Alamos. It's a it will be a classified system. Probably go into the unclassified for integration, but after that, it'll be, it'll be uh, in the classified. That's what it's for. The uh, the other thing is that the mission need requirements, as I stated, were primarily drove memory capacity, and we wish we could get more, right? So so in terms of the requirements, the RFP requirements for Trinity, there was no flop requirement. It basically uh, was based on two things. One was it needed to achieve an 8x over Cielo on certain applications that we will use for acceptance. But what we really wanted to do is, is we wanted to run several of those jobs that I talked about at about 750 terabytes uh, of memory each. So that's where the requirements come from. And that's, that's what's driving this thing. So uh, in terms of the award, we awarded to Cray. Uh, again, the first time at least Los Alamos has been involved in a, a, a next, you know, next generation winner uh, selectee, if you will. The, uh, it's a firm fixed price contract. Uh, it includes a Trinity platform, which includes the file system. It has burst buffer hardware. You saw some of that described uh, by the, the, in the Corey presentation. We have you know, uh, test systems both application regression test systems, one at Sandia, one at Los Alamos, some system development test systems. Uh, we, we, of course, get the regular, we normally do this, we find them very valuable, the on-site system and applications analysts to help us get the system in included. Uh, in addition, we have the Center of Excellence for Application Transition Support, which includes not only Cray, but also Intel on-site support and performance measurement support as we move forward for, for all that. We do have uh, the, the maintenance on it, and we do have some advanced power management that's associated with the, with the contract as well. So Trinity is a single system uh, that contains both the Intel Haswell and the Knight's Landing processors, yeah, although most people had probably heard about the Haswell that was announced last week. That's the one we're getting, the 16-core uh, processor. The, uh, and, and, and when I mentioned that I think in the end this worked out well for us and our users is that the Haswell partition satisfies the FY15-16 uh, mission need without a whole lot of changes to the application codes. Uh, so it's well suited to those existing codes that run there. And then the KNL partition delivered in, in, in uh, FY16 gives uh, application users a significant uh, capability increase 
right? Uh, but also provides them with the greatest challenge because that's where they have to uh, to, to start working on the uh, on the uh, application transition, right? But this was this was a very important thing as as we went through the uh, uh, the actual um, evaluations. Uh, our application community users that are part of those systems basically uh, told us that you know if if we had to go with a, with partial systems that they needed uh, at least half of the nodes of that system to be available in next generation technology so that it would drive them induce them uh, to actually do some work to get there so that they would if they did get there they would have a significant platform to work with. And, and that was significant because that, uh, you know, we not only have to negotiate with vendors, right, we have to negotiate with our program. Uh, and I think that's what sold them uh, coming from the uh, applications community. Anyway, the, uh, the, the burst buffer, as, as you heard before, the Cray XC30, it's a mature architecture with some of the new architectural features, including the KNL processors, the burst buffer storage nodes, and the, the advanced power management system software enhancements. And time flies pretty quickly, right? So I'm going to probably skip this one so I can get to some of the other ones. But, but you see, I think that, except for the first one, right, that the key thing here, like, like you heard on Corey, on the Corey talk and others, is that the, uh, uh, the, the, the new challenge for, for, for the applications users is how to use many core, right? As well as some of the new, uh, you know, on-chip memory, on-node uh, memory that, that's, that's in there. At this scale, right, burst buffer is a is a, a great idea, but at this scale, this is the first time we'll ever actually uh, implement it, right? So we'll see how that goes. And you saw this one presented on uh, first night by Cray, and then you saw a similar one presented by Corey. So I, I I won't spend a whole lot of time on that as we go through. Just to mention our in, in terms of what we're looking at from the. Uh, infrastructure, meaning the burst buffer and the architecture and the file system, we plan to have both of those accessible to both partitions uh, from the Haswell and from the Knights Landing uh, partition. Quick, quick overview in terms of Trinity and how it uh, is uh, uh, measured by the Haswell and the KNL partition. We have, of course, a lot of NDA information, so we have to look, look, do a lot of greater than and close to kinds of things. But you, 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 you get the drift of it. Uh, one thing which uh, I, I didn't put down, I used to have one that, uh, slide that had the requirements, and, and that's why I want to emphasize that we actually did not emphasize uh, peak flops at all. So, but this is the way it, it comes out. And you can see uh, what we're looking at. We want it memory. Uh, we actually have options in the contract to increase the memory on the KNL partition because that's where, in, for our future, that's where we really want to go. In case we ever, uh, uh, you know, uh, can get a, can, can get extra money, and, and if that is where our priorities lie. So I'm not going to go through a lot of this. The total peak flops uh, it looks to be about 42.2. The memory over over two petabytes uh, of memory. So of, when you include both of them together. And the memory bandwidth, and then you, you, you see the memory bandwidth. Oops, I went too far. It's like, you know, two different types of memories on the KNL. Uh, the compute node specifications, you, most of you saw all this stuff in the, in the news last week, the release of that. Uh, but this is, you know, we're getting the 16 core processor uh, for the Haswell node, and then, uh, you know, on the nice landing greater than 60 plus as, uh, based on the NDA stuff. So uh, a lot of this has been covered. It's fairly standard. The details will be worked out as we go through. <coughs> Excuse me. So the Trinity capabilities is that each, each partition will accommodate one to two large mission problems as described. Uh, capability relative to CLO, right? And, and this was... Uh, uh, one of the key drivers, and uh, key performance parameters as well, is that relative to CLO, we want to uh, to see the applications from an application acceptance perspective, three one from each laboratory, uh, be able to uh, get eight to twelve x improvement in 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 in, in some in performance as as defined, right? And then there's all those 
other things that we're looking at. And then relative to Sequoia, right, it's, it's a, a 2x increase in peak flops, but it's got uh, similar complexity relative to core and thre threat level parallelism. The Trinity Center of Excellence, and that this is similar to what uh, Jay described, uh, we're doing a lot of the same things. We're starting out of the gate a little slower because the, the contract was signed much later, uh, but, but that's where we're going. But the, the important thing in, in this Center of Excellence, our work is targeted at very specific codes, one from each laboratory. Uh, and so we picked three. You might say only three. Well, we hope others learn from it and we'll offer lessons learned as we go. But remember that these three applications are millions of lines of code. So it's, it's not an easy proposition and we want to see if we can get starting now, getting uh, these codes ready to run uh, so that when the, the, the actual uh, system comes in, hopefully they're ready to take advantage of the uh, actual system as we go through. So, you know, and you can read through all, uh, all of the other stuff as I look at my time. But, you know, the Intel Knights Landing, Da, da, da. And, and the, the key thing here, I guess, is that for us, we, we do have an application uh, acceptance benchmark that we have to meet. But the real important stuff is this, uh, you know, selected nuclear weapons application code that, that we need to uh, demonstrate and make use of, uh, hopefully as soon as the system arrives. And then we'll work on continuing with other codes as we go through. The system will be located at uh, Los Alamos um, Nick Metropolis Center for Modeling Simulation. This, this gives you an idea as to where the system's going to go in this 43,500 square foot room. For example, that's where Cielo is. This is just a space. It's not really taking up that much space, probably more around here, with the file systems coming in uh, uh, on, this, on this side. The actual, for the system itself, the actual megawatts uh, for water-cooled capability is about 8.9, close to 9. Uh, if you include everything, it gets a total around a little over 10. So it came in under what we thought it might. The facility uh, has been set up to, to, to give us at least 15, 15 megawatts of water-cooled uh, capability. So we've, we've got some, uh, some ex extra stuff in there. Uh, for the future or for the capability systems as we go through. From a scheduled perspective, just a real high level like everybody else, you know, we, we had the uh, contract awarded. Uh, nobody happier than, uh, here than I am as to that, a lot of sleepless nights. But, but we do have a lot of work cut out for it. And we've started working with Cray already in terms of all the next steps. You know, the site, the site prep, the uh, infrastructure, the networking. Uh, uh, archiving whether we'll, we'll be able to do it at you know, what level and so we've got a lot of work to do and, and we're starting with this center of excellence as we move into the uh, applications transition support so you, you look at all uh, all this stuff we expect the, f the first phase to come in between July and September uh, and I've got these things notionally and then I expect uh, the uh, KNL to come in in 2016 anywhere between April and, and September as well right so we're looking at that, but then we, we have you know, marked in there some other milestones that are either programmatic or oversight. Uh, and then uh, when the first part of the system comes in, we will integrate it in, in the unclassified partition, but we will then take it into the red network, classified network, and start running production calculations on it. So just very quickly, I mean, the, the, the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity, right, is of course the application transition work. So uh, uh, I think, and in, in, uh, as I stated, I wanted to reemphasize not just for uh, Trinity, but for all of the ATS systems. And as I'm running out of time, you can read through some of those. Uh, just as, as a summary, Trinity is the first instantiation of the ATS platform. It meets the goals and, uh, or exceeds the goals set by the ACES design team and the NERSC-A team, right? We will be going, we, we know that the, that, whoops, the big issue is, is, is the MPI plus X 
MPI plus OpenMP in this case, right, is what we're going to be doing. And you have all those other things uh, that we need to get at as well. Thanks to Doug Durfler and Tuk Wong and a lot of others, like many others, in putting together presentations. Slides for this presentation. Uh, that we will be updating the trinity.lanl.gov site where you can sort of stay up to date with uh, developments on Trinity. So, on that, with that, I, I'll stop. What was your rationale in going with Knight's Landing versus GPUs? I think in, in, in terms of the evaluations, I would have to say uh, uh, probably schedule was, was a major driver in terms of availability for what we needed and in what time frame. Uh, and also probably a, a lot of internal applications work that had been done to test both. So on uh, your slide, you showed comparisons to Cielo and, and um, <coughs> Sequoia relative to peak performance, but you also mentioned that you chose and did everything not based on peak, but on sustained performance of, of codes. Can you give an idea of the relative uh, increases for Cielo and, and Sequoia based on the uh, sustained application I'm sorry, codes? I didn't quite get you. My apologies. So, so you, you talked about making decisions based on sustained uh, application code performance, but the relationships you gave relative to Cielo's performance and Sequoia's performance were all about peak numbers. Can you comment on the sustained performance relative to the uh, uh, current systems? So, so relative to the, the current systems, I think we had to make some decisions, and the ones that I talked about were really the application performance, uh, sort of key performance parameters relative to acceptance, right? So I think that, that's really where, where we're headed. In terms of the, uh, the current, we, we really wanted to, to actually use the numbers for Sequoia, but Sequoia was not really available so that we could compare or we, didn't get, we couldn't get the time to, to run the baselines that we needed to to, to share with the vendors. Uh, so I'm not sure if that was your question. So. Well, so, well, another way to say, relative to, to the existing systems, how much more or better sustained performance do you expect? Uh, oh, the, the application yeah. performance is 8x. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. 8x. Yeah. Okay, 8x. 8x is what we're, we're targeting. Yeah. So uh, I, I have a sort of a follow-on to something that Bill uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, in the, so DOE is doing a, a couple of very large procurements. In, in the past, the uh, federal government, when making procurements, has specified or encouraged uh, vendors to conform to certain standards. And so you know, we have different vendors coming out with different kinds of accelerators and there's different programming models. Uh, what has DOE done in these procurements to encourage uh, vendors to uh, adopt standards? So what uh, we chose because we, we don't think the programming models are at any level to, to try to direct is, is our RFP was programming model less, if you will, because we did not want to favor one programming model over another. Uh, so I, I wish that we could, uh, that I could, that I could say that, you know, uh, we know what the programming model should be. We don't. I don't think anybody does. What we want to do is, uh, is we know that our application codes are going to have to work on several different technologies and programming models as we move forward. Uh, it's, it's just not there, right? A question about the burst buffer. Was that a really tough sell, being that it's you know untested waters, from your perspective? It 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 would have been in a normal procurement, but because part of this ATS system is to allow us to try new technologies, it it fit right in. Yeah, and so it, it allowed us uh, to 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 spend some of the money that we had on the hardware, and it also allowed us then to work with uh, NERSC and others as we propose. Yeah, what burst buffer software work we need to do, but but it was still a hard sell. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it, I mean people do wonder why are you paying so many dollars for this because that could increase your flops, right? 
but but what we did is is like everybody else we tried to make sure we balanced it we had a very logical argument for you know this is what we're going to gain from that the efficiency of, of uh, compute to to IO goes up by this much if it works uh, but we also did it in such a way that the system will work without the burst buffer so it, it's it's going to improve it. We, we're very confident it's going to work, but we didn't make it dependent on it. <laughs>